Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Completionist. For this episode, I decided to answer a question that I'm sure a lot of people always wondered. And I'm very surprised uh, with how long my channel has been up on YouTube. I haven't really taken the time to actually answer this question. And that question is, why is it that I complete video games? The reason why I decided to make this video is because during my last video in which I was talking about the never-ending saga of trying to complete Rogue Galaxy, uh, two of my subscribers by the names of uh, Sega Genesis 1989 and Quo Phase Arius uh, got into a little bit of a debate trying to figure out the real reason uh, why I complete video games. So I just thought it was best for me to clear the air and give you guys the real reason of why I even complete video games to begin with because I'm sure, as some of you see on my channel, you know, I really put myself through a lot of punishment, especially uh, playing games for a very long period of time in order to complete them. The story of me being a completionist pretty much starts when I was a kid. Uh, I know I've explained this in some of my videos before, but uh, when I was a kid, you know, I never had the opportunity to own a lot of video, video games for a lot of reasons. Uh, even though both my parents were working, uh, I had other siblings, and video games were a very expensive purchase because uh, back in the 80s and 90s, I specifically remember uh, seeing the Nintendo and Super Nintendo games go from anywhere from $70 to $100. So you can imagine, especially being in a family of six people, uh, that you know video games were a luxury purchase and it was because of the fact that video games were such a luxury that uh, we never got to own very many of them and to be honest now that I think about it I was pretty much uh, one of the only kids that would even ask for a video game for uh, for Christmas or my birthday but as I said before guys those were the only times that I ever got to actually own a video game for the majority of my childhood and my teenage years, if I wanted to play a different game, I probably had to do what a lot of people had to do, and that was to go to your local video store and rent them. But I'm sure to a lot of people that are my age, in their late 20s and early 30s, you know as well as I do, that if you went to a video store to rent a game, it was pretty much useless to rent an RPG. Absolutely useless, because most of the times you would only rent video games on the weekend but there was just not enough time during the weekend to even beat an RPG let alone complete it and even if you did rent an RPG and you chose one of the three save files I guarantee you if you see the same game again to rent your save file would be gone so you pretty much have to start over so your only safe bet when it came to renting games was to either rent, rent platformers or fighters or anything along those lines but when it came to owning video games there weren't many ways of actually discovering which games were good and which games were not because during that time, you know, the internet didn't really uh, exist uh, at that time, and the only reference I had to go by for the longest time was my subscription to Nintendo Power. And my main prerogative when it came to me owning games is that I wanted to own a game that would last me as long as possible. So that, you know, if I got one game for my birthday in June, I. Uh, I could play this game for a really long time and then by the time I complete it I'd be ready for another brand new game f for Christmas. And there were some games in which that worked well for me, like two games that come to mind that I got uh, brand new, that I had a lot of fun uh, trying to complete and it did take me a long time to complete, was a Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Uh, I remember getting that game in June and never getting it fully completed until September and that was great and another game was the original Breath of Fire another great RPG for the Super Nintendo and that, that took me a couple of months to complete and uh, even for the NES I got to own my own copy of Final Fantasy and that took me a very long time to complete but I sometimes made the mistake as well of getting a game that was really good and really popular but I had it beaten in about two to three days, uh, three to four days. And even though I had 
fun playing that game, you know, by the time I had it completed, you know, I didn't really have any interest to play the game anymore. And two games, two more games that come to mind was, I, re I remember getting Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time, and I had that game completed on hard mode in about three to four days. And the same thing with uh, Mega Man X, and trust me, Mega Man X, great series, awesome series, and an excellent Mega Man series. But when I got that game brand new over the summer, I had it completed in, in two to three days. So my main prerogative for completing games, especially as a kid, is that I had to milk it out. I really had to milk out the games that, uh, that I owned to try to enjoy them as much as possible. And then I discovered, you know, I like to find everything. I like to find every item. Uh, um, I love being lost in the world and getting every treasure chest and finding every monster and finding every bonus level or bonus dungeon. And, and to me, that just made the game experience that much more exciting. So, you know, especially as a kid when it came to completing games, you know, I really believed that I wanted to get what my dollar was worth. I really wanted to, to get a game that was worth every penny. But as I gotten older, and as games have gotten cheaper, you know, I do it just as my own personal accomplishment. For me, completing games is not something for me to brag about or show off, because to be honest, uh, completing games is something anybody can do. I think the number one trait that you need in order to complete video games is that you need to have patience because especially when it comes to doing everything that a game has to offer you know you are going to have to invest a lot of time into it but for me I always felt that obligation you know if the developers of a said game you know took the time to put something into a game then I want to enjoy their work I want to enjoy everything that they put into the game because it's the least I can do and and to be honest guys when it comes to gaming you know I'm not a competitive gamer I'm not the type of person you know to go after gaming world records even though there are some of my fellow youtubers that think I can do it just because I just have the willingness and the patience just to sit down and play games for hours on end but you know I'm not really interested in you know becoming somebody famous or to have my name in the record book or anything like that when it comes to completing games I just do it for my own personal enjoyment I just love to find everything that a game has to offer and if there's something that can be done in a game I will do it and just one of my biggest pet peeves in video games is just I hate seeing something that has question marks I have to know what those question marks mean I have to know uh, what I missed. It's it's the same, and it's not even with video games. It's the same with any type of media. Uh, if I watch an anime series or a cartoon series or a sitcom, I have to watch every episode. Um, when it comes to a puzzle, I have to I have to do everything by myself. And uh, for me, it's just an, an obsessive compulsive nature of mine. And, uh, and I just truly enjoy it. I just love to do everything that the game has to offer. Um, and, and for me, that, that's pretty much it. Um, you, you know, there are a lot of games, especially in this current, uh, current day and age, that, uh, that are going to take me a hell of a, a long time to do. You know, one series I don't look forward to doing is the Star Ocean series. The Star Ocean series is a completionist nightmare. But especially with most RPGs and especially the JRPGs, you know, I do get very involved in the story and into the grinding and the leveling uh, elements of it. And, you know, I do want to see every ending. I do want to see all the character interactions. I want to see every aspect of story that I can find. And for me, it's just something that I actually really and truly enjoy. And for me, that's the true reason why I complete games. For me, it's just a personal accomplishment of mine. And for me, I want to enjoy everything that the game has to offer. And you know, then what's the point of filling out weapon lists or something like that? Because to be honest, guys, when I complete a game, I retire it for good. You know, there are, there are very few games that I actually go back and play again. Um, 
and for me there are very few. I can only think of a couple that, that, that I may put into my system again once I complete them. And Some of those games are like Bangayo Spirits and Blast Core and, and a few other games like that. But, you know, once a game is completed and I've enjoyed every aspect of it, it goes to the shelf and it stays on the shelf. So guys, that is the real reason of why I complete video games. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little story. So as always guys, take care, and I wish you nothing but the best. And to my fellow completionists out there, stay patient. Later.